Yeah, uh, boy, time flies, huh? Uh, just seems like the other day Bob Dunning rode into town, and now here we are. Uh, I think we've had a good camp, really good camp. We have a ton of talent, a ton of veterans, a ton of depth, a lot of really good new guys. Obviously, I think culture is still our really strong suit, uh, a ton of leaders. We've kind of structured this camp a little bit more for the long haul. Just in terms of we've got an extra game this year. And I think you just have to train accordingly and try to keep everybody healthy and keep everybody fresh, keep their hearts and minds into it. And uh, so that's been, that's been good. Uh, really feel good about our team, though. I really do, and I really like, like I said, the culture. Uh, playing a Cal team, obviously one of the best defensive teams um, in the Pac-12, if not the country, and some are saying the best secondary in the country. Uh, Justin Wilcox coached for, with me at Boise and have known him since his days at Oregon and uh, got Burl Toller and Gerald Alexander and a lot of those guys we have a lot of familiarity with. So uh, very good coaches and they're obviously on an uptick as well. So I think it's a, it's a big opener for Cal. Uh, but it'll be fun anytime you get two University of California schools playing. I think it's great for the alums and the faculty and the fans and uh, should be a great setting in Memorial Stadium and uh, we're we're looking forward to it. What would a win over Cal mean to your program? Oh, geez. I, I don't know. Um, we beat Stanford a long time ago and then hit some dry spells. So I don't know if it's – we really just want to go and play well and uh, really represent ourselves well and, and see what happens. Um, and I don't know, I don't really think highs or lows about it doesn't necessarily mean anything one way or another. Um, sometimes I think all teams get a lot, <clears throat> put a lot of credence on what the decal is on the helmet. And we really try to train our guys not to do that. Up or down, either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, you start getting hung up in who you're playing, and I think you're sort of missing the point. And really, for us, the goal is just play as well as we can and cut it loose, see what happens. You got an offensive line that's young but really experienced. Uh, how's that search for the number five guy on that line? Well, it's, it's good and bad, Bruce. It's There's a ton of guys you can slide in there. That's a good problem to have. I think clearly we could probably play eight, nine, ten guys, and Keen could feel very good about it. Uh, don't know that we have that totally set right now, but uh, Majid obviously is rolling in there. Will Martin's rolling in there. Jordan Ford, his young guys look good. He could roll in there. So it's good to have a lot of bodies uh, that you can plug in because it certainly helps. And is that the left tackle spot you're talking about, or do you feel that with one of your well, primarily it's the guard spot we're talking about. Um, not to say that there aren't fluctuations going on outside as well, uh, but we just have um, a little more stability there. Obviously, um, that was the one lone senior we had up front is was a guard, so we have to replace that. Who will be in left Uh You, Bob, will be playing left guard. Make sure you talk to him a lot. Nice. Uh, obviously, Jake's a real special player. He's one of the better players in the country. Um, again, much like Keelan, I mean, you guys are around and you see them a little bit. I just, it's hard for you, for me to accurately describe <clears throat> what he brings to our football team, just in terms of his leadership. Uh, he runs our team. He really does. And his dedication to the team and the dedication to the process and the legacy of Aggie quarterbacks. And Tim Plough has obviously done an amazing job with him. Uh, but very, very talented player. I've had a lot of scouts coming through here looking at him and uh, starting to get into an era, I guess, where everybody doesn't have to be six foot five. But he's a great player. He's not six five, but he's a great player. 
Yeah, and a lot of it, as you know, just goes down to preparation. I mean, the guy just works so hard, works every day, gets guys every day, works with guys every day, runs all our player run practices throughout the summer. Um, his rage to master is off the, off the hook. Uh, extremely tough, dedicated, smart, all of the above. You mentioned Keelan, so are you following his progress in the end of time? Is it like for you to watch that happen? Uh, obviously really proud of Keelan, and he um, is one in the long line of a lot of Aggies that have uh, had the opportunity to play professional football. And just happy for him because he's worked so hard and he comes from a great family. A little bit of appeal, obviously he's from Alameda and getting to play with the Raiders, and you know we'll see how things go there. But uh, we did go down and watch him practice one day, and. It's hard for us in this profession to watch a lot of other football, but we've caught a little bit of some of the other games that he's played in. And not surprising for those of us that know him or been around him, he's going to outwork and outthink and outprepare uh, most other guys. You, you talk about being as good as you can be focusing in practices and the whole scheme. But uh, Saturday, what are the speed bumps you face in the town? Well, uh, as I mentioned, they're kind of anchored by their defense, and they just do a nice job of really pressuring you and forcing your hand, and they are really good. I'm going to turn this down. Uh, let's see here. I think this is a, probably a telemarketer. Telemarketer, yep. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Do a great job in the takeaway category, really aggressive on the back end, really talented secondary. Uh, we have to do a nice job of being – uh, dialed into what they're doing and how they're doing it. Uh, you hang the ball up, you make bad reads, you're going to turn the ball over in a hurry. Um, so we've just got to make sure, particularly on offense, that we're, we're doing things right because they certainly are. Uh, offensively, I think they're better maybe than people give them credit. Uh, their quarterback was a little bit banged up last year, so I don't think that they could throw it as much as Bo wanted to uh, and like he wanted to, so it forced them into a little bit different game plan. He can run. He's very athletic, and that's obviously a problem. Um, so, and they're solid in the kicking game. Good returners, and uh, really talented kickers, and uh, punters. So, it, we'll have to we'll have to have our A game to to hang in there. That's for sure. What specifically about defense that you do so well? Well, Justin's so doggone smart. Justin Wilcox. He's uh, can bait you into a lot of things. They're good at disguising. Uh, they're very talented. Their free safety can really run. He's a former track guy, and or is a track guy. Uh, can really run and cover a lot of ground. Um, he has them playing at a really high level. They play extremely hard, and they're very fundamentally sound. They really are. So they give you a lot of problems. And he's got enough wrinkles in what he does to kind of keep you off balance. Um, so. Not surprising that they're one of the better defenses in the Pac-12, and like I said, in the country, they're just doing a nice job with those guys. How excited are you about that running back term? I think last year they really showed that they can close out a playoff game with that Northern Iowa stretch. I think, I think it was Northern Iowa, like eight or nine straight runs there at the end, and now Teron's got another year, Lonzi's got another year. Yeah, we like those guys, Teron and Lonzi, both of them are, uh, and uh, we feel like we got some young guys coming as well that have some talent. Uh, but anytime you can get two and three guys in a room that can help you balance out the schedule, it's always good. But again, you're not going to find two better, better kids and tougher kids and harder working kids. A little different in that Teron's a bigger guy and he's hard to arm tackle. Uh, Lonzi, I think, was our second leading receiver last year, and he's really good out of the backfield, can catch the ball that way, and really explosive and really elusive. Uh, so obviously at the speed that we play and the tempo that we play, it's nice to be able to have some guys be fresh. Can you run the ball against Cal? We'll see. <laughs> I think you always, you always have to try and you always have to. Um, well, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Don't know that yet. What's your confidence in going in? Okay. I'll be honest with you. What's your name? I'm Mike. Mike. Uh, I've been doing this for a while. And this goes back all the way when I played here. I just have gone into every game feeling like uh, we have a chance to win, but also knowing that you can lose. And I just have always been that way. I don't, 
I just have never really gone into a game going, oh, yeah, we're going to beat these guys. Oh, oh, man, we have no chance. I've never thought like that. Um, I'm always a little bit amazed when I walk out and we didn't win and that the vision in my mind was incorrect, and that takes me a little while. Um, but, hey, it's the same old story. It's you never know, and that's why you play the game and turnovers happen and injuries happen and um, situations happen. Hey, if the if the uh, the touchdown doesn't get taken off the board last year against Stanford and we're up 10 to nothing, how does that alter the game? How does that alter the confidence? How does that alter the flow? Could have been dramatically, really. So that's why really for us the focus is just play, play our best. Just play our best and have fun with it and represent UC Davis and uh, see what happens. Yeah, we really we, we talk about the season in its entirety at the beginning of the year, just to give them a little bit of context. Once we get going, it is the same old coaching cliches. It's really is a one game season. And once we started prep for Cal, we don't really even talk about those other other teams. Um, so we pour it all into Cal. And then we'll wake up Sunday and evaluate Cal, and then we'll get moving on San Diego on Sunday or on Monday. So once you kind of get into it, it's just that's just a distant thing. You don't talk about it too much.